In this lesson, we'll configure Postgres in order to be integrated in our application. We're going to use the development environment, but this is going to help you to set up a production-like environment. All you need to do is change the appropriate settings in the database.yaml file. Let's go to the terminal really quick and install Postgres and the libraries necessary for Rails to interact with the database system. All you need to do is type in sudo apt-get install postgresql and also libpq-dev. The first one is the actual Postgres server and the second one is the Postgres libraries that Rails needs to interact with the database system. Let's press enter and type in our password. I already had them installed but it should be okay for you. You should be able to press enter once again, download all of the packages, and you should be ready to go. Now there are some things that we need to do first. Let's go to our projects folder slash store. This is the place of our application and I'm going to open Sublime Text and you can see the previous files that we were messing around with. Let me just close this file and open config database.yaml. You can see that we are using SQLite in all of our databases. What I want to do is I want to use development to be PostgreSQL. This is the adapter we want to use. Then we need to go ahead and change the appropriate database. I'm going to call it store. Then I just need to set a couple of more variables. The first one is localhost, then the username, so user. I'm just going to call it Envato and then the password. I'm just going to call it something like Envato PW. Remember that you should be using a secure password and also you should not be committing this file whatsoever. Just keep it inside each different place of your application but don't commit the settings. If you're going to include passwords in this file then you shouldn't be committing it into source control. You can simply ignore this file in the git ignore file. You can open it like this and then type in something like slash config slash database dot yaml. This should be okay. From now on, this file won't be committed. So I'm going to save this and I can exit. I'm going to press Ctrl Q or Alt F4 to leave the editor. Now, as I've mentioned, the terminal is a very powerful tool to manage our system. We need to do something first. We need to create a user or a role like Postgres likes to call it, and finally a database schema and associate it with this role we just created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in sudo u postgres. This will allow me to switch to the Postgres user providing my password. Inside the Postgres user, I'm going to type in a command. I'm going to type in create user. I'm going to press enter. I'm going to type in the name of the role I want to add so it's going to be Envato. Press enter. We want to make sure that this role is a super user. Well, yes, I guess we can do that. And there you go. We have created a new user. So what I can do now, we want to make sure we create a database. So you type in create DB, then dash O to set the owner and pass in Envato. The name of the database should be right before. I'm going to call it store. I believe that's the name of the database we've specified. Yes, there it is. So store should be the name of the database. Let's go ahead to the console once again and press enter. There you go. If everything goes okay, we should be able to manipulate our database. For safe measure, I'm just going to type in sudo service postgresql restart. After all, we've added some changes into the system and we need to restart the service. Let's press enter and Ubuntu is telling us that the database server is restarting and now we should be able to migrate the database. I'll type in rake db setup. Setup will allow me to create the databases, development and test. So let's just press enter and it seems a problem has come up. We specified the adapter but we don't have the respective gem. That's easy to fix. Let's go to Sublime Text and open the gem file. Right under SQLite 3, we want to use the PG gem. 
we want to save and call in the bundle command in the console so Postgres is accessible. OK, notice that the PG gem is right here. Let's go ahead and clear the screen and type in rakedb setup once again. Now we have a different error. It seems the password is not set. After all, we didn't specify the password correctly. Let's just clear the screen and type in sudo u postgres to move to the postgres user in your system and type in psql. psql is a shell command that allows me to interact directly with the system. This time we want to change the Envato role and add in a password. How do we do that? We need to type in some SQL. So I'm going to type in alter user, writer role, alter role, type in Envato and then with password. Then you specify the password. I'm going to type in Envato PW because that's the password that's in the config database YAML file. Press enter and alter role is printed out to your screen. It means no errors were found and the command was executed successfully. Let's see if this is OK. I'm just going to restart the service once again. And then I'm going to type in rakedb setup once more. OK, this time we don't have any errors. The database already exists. So even if we didn't create the stored database, Rails would do so. The SQLite database already exists as well. We just want to create all of the tables inside our new development database. All we need to do now is type in Rails S and the server will boot up. OK, now we can go ahead and open the Google Chrome browser and type in localhost 3000. OK, the application is running successfully over the new Postgres database. Let's create a new product and fill in the tomato, the description, and the category, so fruit it should be. Let's create the product, and there you go. The product was successfully committed into the database, and if you click on the store, the tomato is right there. Congratulations on setting up Postgres. If you need to change settings for production, for example, you just need to go to the database YAML file and change the appropriate settings, and then when you need to run the application, make sure to run it under production you will need to do something like this. Let me just clear the screen and type in Rails S dash E production. This will complain because the database server is not responding. Or it is, but once you go to the browser and reload, you see that something went wrong. If you go ahead and check the logs, you can see it doesn't have the table, so you would just have some problems on setting up the database. You just need to repeat the process all over again for the respective database. Now that we have Postgres up and running, let's take over Nginx. It is a web server that allows me to serve assets without messing with Rails. I'll see you soon.